Truth is, the Ethereum merge is only the first step towards our end goal of scalability. In order to truly scale, we need to take some smaller steps first. One of those steps is something called sharding. In this video, we'll talk about sharding, what it means, how it works, the risks involved, and ways it can improve the Ethereum network as a whole. So what is sharding? Let's explain it with an example. So Mr. Rob really loves going to the beach with his family. He drives there every Sunday and spends most of his time there swimming, getting some tan, and engaging in rap battles with teenagers. It takes him 10 minutes to get to the beach from his home, and that's pretty convenient. But now it's summer, and most people love going to the beach too. The beach is getting overcrowded, and Mr. Rob now spends 30 minutes getting to the beach instead of 10 minutes. The increase in traffic here is quite similar to what's happening on the Ethereum network. Ethereum was initially built to process around 15 transactions per second, but the number of transactions per second has now increased tremendously, leading to congestion. The problem with this is that, as the number of transactions per second on Ethereum increases, so does the amount of time it takes for a transaction to be processed. This is where sharding comes in. So, going by our previous example, sharding would mean adding more lanes to Mr. Rob's road network so that the congestion at the beach would be greatly reduced. The government can simply add one or two lanes to accommodate more cars and reduce traffic. Ethereum sharding is a process by which the Ethereum network can be divided into multiple shards, each of which can process transactions in parallel. This would theoretically allow for the network to process many more transactions than it can now. This would involve splitting up the blockchain into multiple pieces, each of which can be processed independently. In the case of Ethereum, the creator of Ethereum has proposed that the blockchain would be split into 64 shards. This might sound like a small number, but it could greatly scale Ethereum in the long run. In fact, Buterin also stated that Ethereum could theoretically be scaled to 1024 shards in the future. This shows a lot of potential for upcoming upgrades. Sharding is a complex process and it will take some time to implement it on Ethereum. But once it is implemented, it has the potential to greatly improve the Ethereum network. How would this occur? Well, here are three main ways. Number one, faster transactions. The dilemma that every blockchain project faces is how to reconcile the need for security with the need for scalability. In order for a blockchain to be secure, it needs to have a large number of nodes, computers that run the software, spreading out across the world. This decentralization is what makes blockchains so secure. But the more modes there are, the slower the network becomes. This is because each node needs to process every single transaction that takes place on the network. While sharding, this would no longer be the case. Nodes would only need to process transactions that take place on their specific shard. You know, just like having multiple roads that lead to the same destination? Think of it this way. Say you have 10,000 quality controlled staff in a chocolate factory, but all of them have to validate and stamp products before they are sold, capping their throughput to 15 validations per hour. One way to increase their productivity is to randomly assign 100 quality controlled staff to each of 100 shards, where each shard is a conveyor belt with its own products. In this scenario, the total number of products that can be validated and stamped increases to 15,000 per hour. With Ethereum sharding, each transaction would only need to be verified by a small group of nodes rather than the entire network. This would lead to a drastic increase in the number of transactions that could be processed per second. Next, sharding could lead to increased security. Sharding could also lead to increased security on Ethereum. While it's true that sharding introduces some new risks, such as the risk of a shard being hijacked, these risks can be mitigated with proper security measures. In addition, by having multiple shards processing transactions in parallel, we can provide redundancy in case one shard goes offline. Additionally, shards would largely reduce the vulnerability of the Ethereum blockchain because the nodes that validate each shards are selected randomly. Think of it like this. Imagine you have 100 nodes validating transactions on the Ethereum network. Now imagine that one of those nodes is hacked. With sharding, the hacker would only be able to control one shard out of the many that exist. This would greatly reduce the amount of damage that could be done and would make it much harder for a hacker to take over the entire network. Lastly, it could lead to wider adoption of Ethereum. Sharding could increase the adoption and spread of Ethereum by making it easier for new users to join the network. By providing specific shards for different types of transactions, we can make it so that users only need to download a small part of the blockchain instead of the entire thing. This would in turn lead to more users by reducing the amount of time and energy it takes to join the network. 
Speaking of less energy, remember that one of the challenges of cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin is its environmental impact. The process of mining or verifying transactions and adding them to the blockchain requires a lot of energy. In fact, it's been estimated that the Bitcoin network uses as much energy as the entire country of Ireland. With sharding, we can reduce the amount of energy required to mine Ethereum by requiring each node to only process the transactions on the specific shard. This would lead to a more sustainable network that does not put as much strain on the environment. This could give Ethereum an advantage over other cryptocurrencies in the long run. So now you know what sharding means and ways it could potentially transform Ethereum. Let's talk about the three risks involved. The first one is a management protocol. Having shards is a great idea, but we still need management protocols to keep them working and running efficiently. In the words of Vitalik Buterin, this protocol is a logic that checks and manages shards, but if there are too many of them, this becomes expensive. This is generally a problem with all scaling solutions. The more you scale, the more you need to spend on the protocols that keep everything running smoothly. There is a risk that these costs could outweigh the benefits of sharding and make it not worth doing. To mitigate this risk, Buterin has proposed roll-ups to help keep things running smoothly. If you don't know anything about roll-ups, then you should probably check out our video on roll-ups. The second is cross-shard communication. In order for shards to work together, they need to be able to communicate with each other. This presents a challenge as we need to find a way for the nodes on one shard to verify the information they're receiving from another shard without slowing things down. This is difficult because we need to be able to trust the information we're getting from other shards, but we also need to be able to do it quickly. This is a long-term concern and not something to worry about at the moment because the Ethereum blockchain can support 1024 shards and we only have 64 shards being proposed at the moment. The third and the final risk is the risk of network downtime. A network downtime is when the entire network goes offline for a period of time. This could happen if there is an attack on the network or if there are too many shards and the management protocols can't handle it. Network downtime is a risk with all scaling solutions, but it's especially a concern with sharding because it's a new technology that hasn't been tested at large scale yet. To mitigate this risk, Ethereum is planning to roll out sharding gradually. They will start with smaller networks and then increase the number of shards as they get more experience with the technology. Furthermore, Buterin claims that these risks are unlikely, at least until Ethereum begins to break above 1 million transactions per second. Given that Ethereum currently runs 12 to 15 transactions per second, I'd say things are likely to run smoothly short term. In summary, sharding is a way to increase the scalability, efficiency and security of the Ethereum network. It's a complex process, but one that could have a big impact on the future of Ethereum. To learn more about the Ethereum merge and its effects, click on this video on your screen.